You are watching WNIT South Bend Elkhart. Take a break, take control, take advice from someone you know. Oh, come on over, come on in, pull up your feet, take a lot of your feet. Come on over, come on in, you can unwind, take a lot of your mind, yeah. Come on, come on over, come on, come on in, come on. The open studio set has been designed by Gary Weiss, with furnishings provided by Village Lamp and Furniture Gallery. Today's episode of Open Studio is made possible in part through the generous support of the CTS Foundation. Welcome to the second hour of Open Studio. And here we are again. Called Local Links. If you are a second hour viewer, maybe not as much a first hour viewer, and your schedule doesn't always have you here, uh, every week, you may not recognize my co-host, Meinel Moldsby, who has joined us uh, in the uh, the wake of uh, Trina Cutter's departure. And it's awfully good to have you here. And it's good to be here. You're having fun. I'm having lots of fun. And uh, learning the lesson we all learn with this show, that uh, this is one amazing place to live. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Meet people. Well, that's true. <laughs> this is very true. First hour uh, was evidence of that. It was exciting. Yeah, it was neat. Good stuff. Never saw one of those smoke machines that close up before. Oh no! Filled no. the studio, <laughs> made the illusion even better. Yeah, like Good I said, stuff. they were like wanting to go to London but can't quite get there. This was, I, a, this was like being there. Machine. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, yeah, your whole living room. You could be in London every night. Yeah, you could, yeah. yeah. You, could, you could wear like a Sherlock Holmes hat and do all kinds of neat stuff. Yeah, yeah, we right. could. But probably not. No. Okay. So. We got some fun things coming up. We do this hour. Yes. What do you have? Well, I've got um, Connie Rufenbarger. She's going to cook something special from Italian cooking. Mm. Did you say chicken? Chicken. Earlier? Yeah. Chicken, and then we've got Remember can When. Can I have some? Yeah, you can have okay. some. We'll save you right. a piece. Good. That's important to me. Okay. We also have uh, <laughs> have uh, a woman to talk about renovating an old, old building uh, down in North Webster in Kosciuszko County. Other really fascinating things I'd love to tell you about <laughs> if they weren't telling me we're out of time for this segment. So we need to get to a very interesting feature focusing on Kosciuszko County called Remember When. Kosciuszko County lies in north central Indiana, the second county south of the Michigan border. Settlers began arriving in the early 1830s and many settled in the prairies that covered one third of the county. At various times, the area had been attached to Allen, Cass, or Elkhart counties, but in 1836, it became a separate county. The name Kosciuszko was chosen in honor of Thaddeus Kosciuszko, a Polish noble who served with George Washington during the Revolutionary War. One year prior to the forming of the county, three towns were fighting for the right to be the county seat, Leesburg, Oswego, and Warsaw. At the time, Leesburg was the county's largest town, and the place where circuit court and county commissioners met. But because Leesburg was not in the geographic center of the county, Warsaw was chosen to be the county seat. Warsaw was platted in the summer of 1836 and named in honor of the capital city of Poland. The first two courthouses built in Warsaw went up in 1837. The third courthouse was put up on the courthouse square in 1848. It served until the present day courthouse was built in 1884. There are approximately 100 lakes in Kosciuszko County that attract visitors, but perhaps the most famous is Winona Lake. It was once one of the top religious and entertainment centers in the country. In 1884, the resort was opened as Spring Fountain Park. It was primarily designed for amusement and recreation, but did attract numerous business conventions. Just 11 years later, the park was sold and became known as the Winona Assembly and Summer School Association. Programs of lectures and concerts were being held that attracted thousands to Winona. 
Today, Kosciuszko County remains a collection of cozy places, towns, farms, and lakeside communities where people take pride in knowing their neighbors. Welcome to Blueprints. This is the segment where we talk about projects in our local communities which are bringing uh, a new look, a uh, new hope in some cases, uh, inspiring people to believe that these communities will continue to develop in all sorts of positive ways. And we have with us today to talk about a project in Kosciuszko County, Carol Shelby. Nice to have you here, Carol. Thank you, Mark. You come with the title Renovator. We haven't had many renovators on the show. What, what does a renovator do? Well, I bought an old building and renovated it. That's pretty simple. Yes. <laughs> okay, I ask, I ask a simple question, you're going to give me a straightforward answer. Now, you are in North Webster. That's correct. Yeah, which is where in Kosciuszko County, for those who would not necessarily be so familiar with the county? Well, it's on Indiana 13, um, north of 30, between Warsaw and Syracuse. Okay. That's pretty country in there, really talking during one of the breaks. That, it's, uh, it's located right on a lake, Webster Lake, yeah. and it's a charming little fishing village. Is it, is it old? How old is North Webster? Um, it started in 1837 when the area was opened for uh, settlement, oh my. and um, a man by the name of Ephraim Muirhide um, built a mill um, on a dammed up a stream and built a mill and caused the flooding of an area that became Webster Lake, oh. and then a little town built up around the lake, um, uh, first called Boydston's Mill and then renamed North Webster. Hmm. Why'd they change the name? You know? I don't really know. <laughs> it was a long time ago, before me. <laughs> yeah, which do which you like better? Well, I think Boydston's Mill is kind of nice because yeah. it has an historic value. Yeah, and it sort of helps to connect to all of that. North Webster, right. where'd the Webster come from? I guess Daniel a, Webster, and yeah. I don't know who thought that up, but... Where is Webster, if this is North Webster? <laughs> <laughs> and I can't answer that question either. I've, I've been down there looking already. I, I can't find Webster. <laughs> and there's no South Webster. No, that's right. Just North Webster. Uh -huh. It's yeah. unique. It's a right. special kind of place. <laughs> it is unique. That's true. <laughs> how, how long have you been associated with this community? Well, um, I lived all my summers on Lake Topekanu. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went into North Webster to shop with my mother. In fact, my mother took me to this old grocery store. And I guess that's why eventually I ended up with it, because I, I have a soft spot in my heart for it, mm -hmm. as do many, many other people, because it's over 150 years old. Wow. Well, let's talk about this building. Okay. Uh, how did you come to actually acquire it and, and begin this project? Well, um, the Bachman family, who had owned the building for five generations, John Bachman built the building probably in the 1850s. And they had always run a mercantile and a grocery store, uh, generation after generation. And um, in the uh, 1980s, they were wanting to give it up. And um, they had it up for sale. And because I just couldn't stand to see it lost, I bought it. Was there, was there danger that it might have actually gone down? Well, I think it had been proposed numerous oh, times. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, you know, every, everyone said after I bought it, everybody said, oh, we so hoped that it would be restored yeah. and kept. Yeah, they just, they just hadn't gotten around to doing it. <laughs> well, it's a big project. <laughs> right. Yeah, I am sure it is. Let me, let me just, one, one minor point for our younger viewers, you, you refer to it as a mercantile. What yes. kind of a store was that? Well, it was a general store. They had um, groceries downstairs, and upstairs there was a gallery with a middle opened and a gallery around where they sold shoes and, and dry goods, lace, things like that. In fact, Martha Bachman told me that her great uncle um, was inventorying the lace one time, and he put down one hell of a lot because he didn't know about lace. <laughs> 
I can't understand that temptation any time I've ever had to do inventory. I don't think they should have had a man inventory late, but... <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't have the sensitivity. No, I don't think so. Didn't understand. Well, you have brought some nice photographs along to mm -hmm. help us see this building and understand what it is that you're up to with it. So let's take a look at that. Let me uh, pull off the paper clip here so I can move these along. Uh, orient us here. What, where, well, what are we looking at? That, is that that's it? a really early one, probably in the 1870s, maybe. Mm. Uh, and the uh, the white front is there with the drug sign on the on the side of it. Gotcha. That would have been an early, I mean, photography itself hadn't been around all that long. Right. And, uh, Matthew Brady. And you can see the horses, see. so. Yeah. Wow. Nice wide streets, though. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> from back east. I still can't get used to some of these wide streets. All right, let's and move on. And it was on. a dirt street, if oh, you notice. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. And that's a close-up of, of it early on. Uh, there's a gas pump there, um, which obviously there were cars, but you can see hitching posts along the side as well. Yep, yeah, we were in that, that transition stage of right. American society. And that's some of the Bachman brothers oh. there standing in front of their grocery. Looks like merchants to me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've got the aprons on, they're ready to do business. Are there things we should understand about the design of the building? Do you know who actually designed this building? In the I think place? it's possible that John Bachman built it himself. He was a carpenter as hmm. well as an evangelical minister. And um, it's a Greek revival. Um, it's just a very handsome building. It really, truly is. Let's let's move on here. Ah, oh, this is great. I love these pictures. <laughs> yeah, we have about two minutes, so I that's, guess we better keep okay, rolling. Okay, that's here. the interior. Um, a long time ago, and you can see the gallery, the tin uh, ceiling around mm -hmm. the gallery, mm -hmm. and the interior of it. Um, supposedly, meat merchants would. Uh, bring streamers and things to decorate. I guess that was a little plus. <laughs> good good <laughs> idea. Thing. Yeah, boy, shelves are well stocked there. Ah, now, yeah. this is much more recent. And that's the new white front, historic white front shop. Wow. There are now five shops in that area, and it encompasses half the block. And this is, you were telling me that this building is amazingly intact. I mean, for for its age, 150 years old, but you, yes. what you bought was the building. I mean, it was really still there. Yes, and it was a lot of its old, it just hadn't been ruined. It, it was the original checkout counter. Um, as you will see in further pictures, yeah. that that's the front of, in the cafe, Beautiful. is the front of one Very of the nice. old um, refrigeration units. Neat. We have 60 seconds, okay. so I'll just pull right on through. This is, I think, that's our last photograph. The jewelry here. store with the beadboard yeah. wainscoting. Yeah. What's, what's the future for this building? Uh, have you done everything you want to do, or are there other things you need to do? I think we've about done it, and we just hope that it's a big success. It's gorgeous. Well, what's the response been so far? Very good. Yeah. People love it. Do you get people coming in who, who know stories, who are adding to sort of your, your history of this mm -hmm. place? Yes. That's a wonderful thing. Yes, it's, yeah, yeah. it's exciting for us, and it's a, it's a good plus for us, because people have fond memories of it. Well all the best to you as well, you continue you. to do that does it does it inspire you to, to take on any more projects like this or, or is, no, is this your contribution i think i'm <laughs> about worked out here but it's it's yeah. it's a pleasure and we enjoy the shop great well it is in north webster friends uh, and if, uh, if you can appreciate a building it's got some age please check it out carol shelby thanks very much for being with us thank you very much for having me nice to have you here coming up my now somehow wrestled away from me my favorite feature what you got cooking so stick around for that cell of the Kosciuszko County Jail, but not the current jail. I'm in the Kosciuszko County Old Jail Museum and Library. And the cell I'm in, one of ten, has been unchanged since 1871. 1982 saw the last prisoner in the Kosciuszko County Jail. 
and that was the same year that the Historical Society decided they needed a place to call home. Four years later, they opened the museum in the old jail. All of the cells, the bullpens, and the sheriff's residence are now on display. The Kosciuszko County Jail Museum is a showcase for thousands of historic and nostalgic items recalling earlier days. The displays range from schoolroom items to military collections, and just about everything in between. Of particular note is a display of John Dillinger items. In 1934, he and an accomplice robbed the Warsaw Police Station of guns and bulletproof vests. The museum also houses a genealogy library, offers special events and demonstrations, and has a well-stocked gift shop. The shop sells postcards, books and publications of county interest, and special Afghans. Perhaps the most unusual exhibit in the museum is the solitary cell. This cell hasn't changed much since when the building was built in 1870, and it wasn't the best place to be, unlike the Kosciuszko County Old Jail Museum and Library. Jason? Um, are you going to let me out? <laughs>